Drawing the graph in IGCSE physics, paper five and paper six could be very challenging, especially the time given to answer the paper is very, very limited. So in this video, I'm going to discuss on four important tips in drawing the graph in IGCSE physics, paper five and paper six. Now, I really need you to stay until the end of the video because not just the tips that I'll be giving you, but also some extra tips to be given, as well as to apply all the tips that I'll be giving here in one of the past year question. So let us get started. Oh, before doing so, please do subscribe to my YouTube video for more important tips to be shared on the video, and you do not want to miss any important tips that I share. So thank you very much for your subscription, and let us get started. So tip number one related to axis sounded very easy. It is related to X and Y axis. So please bear in mind all your X and Y axis must be labeled correctly together with their appropriate units. Why do I say appropriate units again? Because not all the physical quantities have unit. As long as they have unit, you need to label their units that easy. So let us look at one of the past year question. Plot a graph of P slash n. Now p is what we call physical quantity and n is the unit on the y-axis against x slash cm on your x-axis. Now this is a graph given so what are you supposed to do? Take out the ruler. Use pencil to plot your graph. So on your y-axis, make sure that you use your ruler to draw a straight vertical line and label it as P slash N. This is what I meant by labeling. And the other one is your X axis. Use your ruler to draw a horizontal line and label it as X slash CM. And you gain one mark for that. How easy is that, right? Now, second tip is this related to plotting. You know, right before you plot a graph, a table will be given together with the numbers or you are asked to do some calculation before plotting the graph, right? Whether the numbers are given or you are asked to do calculation, it doesn't matter. And just make sure that all the numbers, all the coordinates must be plotted correctly on your graph. So that also means that you have to look at your table and all the values there must be plotted as accurately as possible on your graph paper. Now I do know this, hey, which skills should I use to plot the graph? This is one of the most hated part faced by most of the students. I do understand that. So I'm giving you extra tips here on how to determine your skill. So first one, Ooh, okay, this is what I call extra tips. That is the reason why I need you to stay until the end of the video because I'll be giving you more and more stuff. And you trust me, you do not want to miss the important information that I'm sharing with you right now. So tips in choosing the right skills. So first, you have to look at the smallest value compared with the largest value on both your X axis and your Y axis. So this is one of the example from the past year question. And let me label my y-axis first to avoid callous mistake. X-axis is here and uh, y-axis is here. And this is my x-axis. Now, you, I know that you are not supposed to bring in your highlighter. So I would suggest you to just circle the largest value and the smallest value. So this is my large, uh, smallest value on my y-axis. And this is my smallest value on my x-axis. And the largest value on my y-axis is 6, whereas the largest value on my x-axis is 36.8. Now, to make things easier, this is what I always practice. So I don't have a problem with my y-axis because from y-axis, it seems to be very easy to determine the scale. But from x-axis, the smallest number is 10.2 and the largest number is 36.8. It seems to have decimal points there. And, and the decimal points are in the not multiple of 2, not multiple of 5. So it's hard to determine the scale on the x-axis, right? So this is what I practice to do. For the smallest value on the x-axis, try this. Try my method. Try to round down the decimal points to the whole number. Round down to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to round down this 10.2 to 10. 
and for the largest value, try to round up to the closest whole number. So this is 36.8. Maybe you want to round it up to 37. Doesn't matter. That's all. And right, tip number two, use simple whole number as the skill which seems to be easier. And of course, you can use decimal point, but my suggestion is always try with the whole number first. See whether the whole number, if the whole number seems to be um, very small skills, that very small part of a graph that you're using, then try to use decimal points. That is the tips. So this is my other tip. Remember not to use odd scale. The odd scales that I meant here is like uh, multiple of three, multiple of seven, multiple of 11, etc. So I have a reason why I ask you not to use the odd scales because it will be very, very time consuming if you use the odd scale because you need to determine the exact uh, coordinate for your reading because not all the coordinates are in the multiple of the odd scales that you are using. So if you use even skills, it is easier as compared to odd skills. So that's my advice here. So this is a graph. So you have to label your y-axis and your x-axis, like what I label here. So for y-axis, it doesn't have a problem because you can always start your value with the smallest value given here. So I would like to start with 2, which is the smallest value on my y-axis, and end up with 6, which is the largest value on my y-axis. Now, some students might be asking, do I need to start the graph um, with 0, 0 or origin? My answer is no, not always, unless the question itself mentioned that you need to start your graph with 0, 0, or start your graph with origin, then only you start your graph with zero, zero. Else you could start from any numbers that you liked. So this is my Y axis. So my X axis, you see, I start with the whole number. I start with the smallest number. I round it off to the smallest number, which is smallest whole number, which is 10. So I put in the multiple of 10. So I have 10, 20, 30, and 40, because 37 is larger than 30. So which is, but smaller than 40. So all my, points are plotted on the graph and all you need to do is just to plot all the points on the graph just like that sounds easy now tip number three best fit bf now what do i mean by best fit best fit is a straight line that passes through most of the points plotted on the graph but sometimes you definitely know that when we are human and we human conduct the experiments, some errors occur due to the inaccuracy. We do, cannot get all the points lying on my straight line. So when you face this kind of problem, all you need to do is just to plot your best feet. It is very easy to say best feet, right? But some students having difficulties in determining their best feet. I do face this problem once, but I have a tip for you. So this is the extra tip that I'm giving you. If you face problem in determining the best feet line, oh, which line should I draw? Is this a best feet or is this a best feet? Don't worry, do your calculation. Calculation of what? Calculation of centroid. What do I mean by centroid? So, okay, let us look at the graph again. But before that, okay, I am going back to the table tabulated here. So I am guiding you on how to determine the centroid. So you look at your y-axis. So I have to label first. This is my y-axis and this is uh, my x-axis. Centroid is a point where the best fit line must pass through. So how to determine the centroid? You look at the y-axis. This is my y-axis. You add out all the values on your y-axis. It means that for y-axis, add out 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and divide by the number of readings. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, five readings, so you just need to divide by five and let your calculator to handle the rest. So the answer that I got was four. So this is four, just put here four. 
And what about your x axis? Just put x axis here. So just add out all the value 10.2 plus 23.1 20, plus 30 plus 33.8 plus 36.8 and divide it by the number of readings, which is five. And you're supposed to get 26.78. So I'm going to round it off to three significant figures, which is 26.8. Is that okay with you? So 26.8. Now, can you see that I get one coordinate here? So my coordinate is 26.8 and 4.0. So this coordinate is called a centroid. It's the average on all your readings, average coordinates of all the readings that you have tabulated in your table. So you just need to plot it as a dot here. Cannot put a cross here, but to put a dot here. So based on that centroid point, just draw your straight line graph. And make sure that all the points are as close as possible to your best fit line. That is the most accurate way in determining your best fit. I hope it helps. So the last part is the quality of the graph. So once you have determined your centroid, once you have plotted your straight line graph, but do also make sure that the size of your X that you plot on the graph is within one small box. What do I mean by that? Let us go back to our graph. So this is my graph. Could you see that this is what I meant by one small box? Make sure that the size of your X is within that one small box. Cannot be as large as this and cannot be as small as that for the quality of graph. And, and make sure that, also make sure that all your points are not too far deviated from the best fit line. So make sure that all the points are as close as possible to your best fit line. And these are the four tips that I hope will help you in drawing your graph in future. And all the best to your coming exam and do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting and more tips to be shared on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again. Bye.